the 2017 UIM F1H2O World Championship headed to China for the Grand Prix of Harbin. Located in Heilongjiang province in northeastern China, Harbin is renowned as the Ice City, a winter tourism wonderland which annually hosts the world-famous Harbin Ice and Snow Festival. Harbin is the eighth largest city in the People's Republic of China, a cosmopolitan metropolis with a long and illustrious heritage that mixes Chinese, Manchu and Russian influences over more than a century. Harbin's rich cultural diversity is reflected in its historical buildings and architecture, but this is also a city of modernity and youth, offering a blend of sophistication, refinement and economic development that defines modern China. Downtown Harbin features historical cobblestone streets lined with fashionable boutiques, cafes, restaurants and parks where tourists and locals work and play, offering something for everyone all year round. Harbin hosted its second successive UIM F1H2O Grand Prix. Round 3 of the 2017 season raced on the scenic Hulan Estuary Wetland Park. The weekend saw thousands of fans turn up yet again, keen to cheer on the defending world champion Philip Xiaop and the CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team. And locals didn't miss the chance to take a spin on the F1H2O two-seater. Let's see what happened in the previous round. In round two in Evian, France, three-time consecutive world champion Alex Corella of Team Abu Dhabi snatched pole position and had a great start to lead the race early, chased by round one winner Philip Schiap and Sammy Celio. Corella opened a comfortable lead for 11 laps before Australian Grant Trask of F1 Atlantic team barrel rolled, leading to a yellow flag. At the restart, Sammy Celio immediately passed Shiop to take second place as the Frenchman once again hit trouble in Evian, eventually retiring on lap 17, frustrated and unable to finish a race in Evian for a third straight time. Coming up the field was American victory driver Sean Torrente, who had to start in 15th position after crashing out and qualifying. He had an incredible restart, overtaking six boats in a single lap to move up to third spot behind Corella and Celio. Celio put the pressure on Corella in the final laps of the race, but the Italian held on to win a second year in a row in Evian. Celio, runner-up, Torrente third, his victory teammate Al Hamily fourth, ahead of Thani Al Kamzi fifth. Despite Corella's win, two runner-up finishes in the first two rounds shot Sammy Celio to the top of the standings, one point clear of Corella, Schiap dropping down to third, Benevente in fourth, Torrente up in fifth, heading into round three. There were 19 drivers from 12 countries and nine teams competing in the Grand Prix of Harbin. All eyes were once again on three-time defending world champion Philip Xiap of CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team. Xiap had a great start to his 2017 campaign with a win in Portimao, but has now ceded the standings lead to Celio after failing to complete his race in Evian. Pressure is on in home waters to deliver. Yes, this, this race is very important for me and my team because uh, we lose a lot of points in uh, Evian and, uh, and we need a uh, big point. Oh! 
two-time world champion Sammy Celio of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team is a four-time Grand Prix winner in China, and he goes into Harpin in top form. And he's looking to carry his excellent momentum through to topple she up. It's nice to be in the lead, but of course, a little bit more extra pressure, but uh, I try to avoid that and uh, only thinking about uh, race by race and see what it will come. Another four-time China Grand Prix winner, Alex Carella, is coming off a dominating win in Evian, and he was racing in the zone, the fastest man in the first free practice. He's joined by veteran and two-time China Grand Prix champion, Thani Al Kamzi in Team Abu Dhabi, who's always a contender. Victory team's Sean Torrente managed to salvage a podium finish against all odds last round, and he'll have to deliver again here if he's to get his championship campaign back on track. His teammate Ahmed Al Hamali wants a second China Grand Prix title to his name here, hoping for a turnaround to a lackluster season so far. There are two perennial title contenders in Team Sweden, the veteran five-time and former China Grand Prix champion Jonas Anderson and his young teammate Eric Stark, who's looking for his first Grand Prix win in his fifth F1H20 season. And then there are the likes of Blaze Performance Team's 12-time Grand Prix winner Francesco Cantando, Emirates Racing Team's Moritz Stromoy, F1 Atlantic principal and current world number four Duarte Benevente and the talented Grant Trask of Australia, all of whom are capable of producing an upset here. It's one hell of a field. The Grand Prix of Harbin Circuit is very different to what the drivers are used to. Just four pins, no right-hander, and very short, posing unique challenges for the teams and their setups on a freshwater course where winds can kick up out of nowhere. It's a good track, it's like Australia, you know, no right-handers, straight up and down, it's a horsepower course and who can drive the loosest and get there fastest, so, you know, it'll be a bit of fun. It's quite demanding, the wind condition, it's same like last year, a little bit challenging in the back straight, also the turns make it challenging, the short straight, long straight, to find the perfect setup by the props and you need to be fast, but you still need to have the good acceleration, so it's the combination where you go. You try to get more speed or more acceleration, and you need to make the right choice. Former multiple F1H to a world champion, Jonathan Jones, gives us a rundown of one of the most crucial pieces of high-tech engineering in powerboat racing, the propeller. Propeller design has come a long way in recent years. Not only has the design changed somewhat, but also the configuration and the thickness of the propeller. These days they're very, very much thinner. You can see it's almost like a razor blade as you touch the edge there. And they also come in different shapes and sizes. Um, this particular propeller has got pointed tips, as you can see, whereas this one has got rounded tips. With a pointed tip propeller, it means that you can run the propeller higher out of the water. And by that, if you can see this line that we've got here in relation to the bottom of the boat, when I put the propeller on the back of it, you can see that when two of the blades are actually out of the water, two of the blades are in the water. This is called a surface propeller, and we get almost zero cavitation with it as the boat is pushed along. The less of the gearbox we've got in the water as well, the less drag we've got. So what you want to do is move this unit up as high as you can, but at the same time, make sure that the propeller is actually in the water and driving the boat forward. It all starts with a BRM official qualifying, three sessions to determine the starting lineup, the crucial first step to race success. Q1, Eric Stark set a blistering lap time early on and then just sat it out to conserve fuel. Grant Trask struggled, only able to get two laps in before withdrawing, but his teammate Duarte Benevente managed to sneak in in 12th place, just managing to outpace Peter Marin of CTIC F1 Shenzhen. Former pole position winner Moritz Stromoy managed to qualify for Q2 with a solid time, but her Emirates racing teammate Mike Shimura was out. Maverick F1 driver Amaury Jossom pushed too hard and went out in a huge crash. He went flying, going over one and a half times, but luckily emerging unscathed. Oh, oh. Also 
also unable to make the Q2 cut were Francesco Cantando, Team Abu Dhabi rookie Rashid Al Kamzi, and Maverick F1 driver Cedric de Guin. In Q2, it was a full-on battle as 12 drivers vied for a place in the last six, each driver one-upping the other. Stark was again up there with the fastest of them, but this time the top lap belonged to Thani Al Kamzi, followed by Al Hamali and Torrente. Stark's teammate Jonas Anderson was struggling to lay down a good time. Behind Anderson, Moritz Stromoy also struggled, unable to crack the top six. The last remaining Blaze Performance driver, Bartek Marsalek, was also off the pace, out in Q2. Sammy Celio equaled Stark's time, nabbing fifth spot before the Finn crashed out of Q2 with a spectacular barrel roll. Celio was unhurt, but his team had work ahead of them if Celio's boat was going to be ready for the race. Going into the final seconds, Schiaf was clinging to sixth. Corella went out for one final attempt as the checkered flag went up. Corella laid a blistering time. It looked like he had it. Schiaf bitterly disappointed. We have an engine problem this morning. We changed an engine just before the qualifying. And uh, this is good, but uh, not enough for, for qualifying. It's a game. But to the Frenchman's surprise, he was called back to his boat. Corella's final lap was deemed to have started just after the checkered flag went up. It was null and void. That put a relieved Chiap through to Q3 with Corella out in seventh spot. showdown each of the remaining boats with a circuit to themselves and two laps apiece for a shot at pole position shop went out first but made a few mistakes on both his laps then Eric Stark charged out after him taking the lead with a lightning lap of 40.65 seconds setting a very tough target for the remaining drivers Torrente was up next he gave it his all but this time it was just too much of a reach for him his teammate Ahmed Al Hamali would be up next. Pretty happy with the day. I'm no smooth water gangster, but at least I'm in the top four or five, I think. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully, Ahmed can put it on pole. It's perfect. For the water's perfect for his boat right now. So hopefully, Ahmed can put it on pole. He set a brilliant time of 40.83. Not enough to beat Stark, but moving him into second spot with just one man remaining, Tani Al Kamzi. Good job. Al Kamzi was exceptional out there, careening around the circuit, bringing his experience and steely nerves to bear as he tried to beat Stark in pole. Eric Stark wins his second career pole position as he gets the best seat in the house come race day. Big surprises in BRM official qualifying as the favorites are shoved to the back. Stark with pole, Al Kamzi second, Al Hamili in third, Torrente fourth, then Shiap, Celio and Corella, all with a lot of ground to cover. The three ex-teammates take the podium as they all relish the opportunities that await them for the next day's race. Now we're going to you know, suck in this moment and then we need to try to you know, focus on tomorrow and you know, it's very important to have a good start and you know, finish the race. So like, but half the race is done now. So. With the stress, frenzy and excitement of a day's racing behind them, teams, drivers and the F1 H2O family got to unwind and enjoy some sensational Chinese hospitality, Harbin style. Third Grand Prix of the season was underway as teams completed final preparations and adjustments for the battle ahead. The season has seen two different race winners so far and the talent-packed field has tightened the standings, giving the impression anything could happen. All eyes are on pole sitter Eric Stark, but he has to hold off a hell of a lot of big names to his right. Former China Grand Prix champ Daniel Kamzi three-time world champ Alex Corella, two-time back-to-back world number three Torrente, and defending world champion Philip Schiap, who has the local support behind him. Daniel Kamzi is in second on that start pontoon. Oh. 
with his former Team Abu Dhabi teammate Ahmed Al Hamali beside him. Torrente in fourth, Schiap and Corella back in fifth and sixth, Stromoy is seventh, then Anderson eighth, Philip Roms and Bartek Marsalek completing the top ten. Last year's Poland race winner, Sami Celio, starts back in 15th following an engine and boat change after his crash in qualifying, and Francesco Cantando right at the end. The final seconds, a nervous silence reigns. And there's the roar as 19 boats storm out of that starting pontoon in a dead-on drag race down that starting straightaway to the commitment buoy with Eric Stark leading the pack. Anderson struggles off the mark as Philip Roms and Moritz Stromoy leave him in their spray. The field is tight, heading to the first turn. Al Kamzi is right up there, neck and neck with Stark as the two lead boats start pulling away. In a tight battle for third, Torrente is squeezed out by Al Hamali and Philip Schiap as they come around the commitment buoy. Al Hamali moves out and nearly collides with Schiap. Schiap swerves at the last second. That was close. Sean Torrente moves up on the inside, going side by side with his victory teammate Ahmed Al Hamali. The two blue boats lock horns down that straightaway, but they're both smoked by Alex Corella, who charges past them and sets his sights on the two lead boats. The crowd's on their feet, relishing these dramatic opening minutes. Cedric de Queen is chasing Rashid Al Kamsi of Team Abu Dhabi to his left. Rashid Al Kamsi has a great start as he moves up three positions, overhauling Duarte Benevente, Philip Roms, and Mike Shimura. Meanwhile, Sean Torrente has found the pace on the inside to catch and then pass Alex Carella, the American moving up into third position. Up in the lead, Eric Stark opens his lead, but Daniel Kamsi stays in hot pursuit, followed by Torrente in third, then Corella fourth, Al Hamali in fifth, with Shiap in sixth. The three-time defending world champion has had a rough time since winning round one, and he knows he needs the big points here. Further back, big battle for eighth place as Bartek Marsalek chases Moritz Stromoy. Marsalek's yellow DAC boat comes around the turn right behind Stromoy, and Marsalek does it. Bartek Marsalek passes Stromoy to move into eighth. At the end of two laps, Stark leads by over two seconds over Thani Al Kamzi to Rente third, Alex Carella fourth, Al Hamali fifth, Philip Schiap back in sixth, with Anderson, Marsalek, Stromoy, and Rashid Al Kamzi completing the top ten, Benevente and Roms in eleventh and twelfth. Philip Roms has struggled since the start of the race, dropping from 9th to 12th as the Finnish Mad Croc Baba racing driver is passed by Duarte Benevente. Shiap's CTI CF1 Shenzhen China teammate Peter Morin takes on Emirates driver Mike Shimura. Peter Morin overhauls the young German to move up to 14th position after having started in 16th. Good racing from the F1 newcomer. But the man who's stealing the show so far is Eric Stark. He's had a perfect start to his campaign from pole here, but Daniel Kamsi is right up there with him. Eight laps down and Stark is racing like a veteran out there. He grew up watching and idolizing names like Daniel Kamsi, and now he has Al Kamsi in his rear view mirror. Not bad for this multiple F2 world champion in his 22nd Grand Prix race in F1 H2O. Right behind Al Kamsi is another juggernaut, Sean Torrente, a man who has consistently finished on the year-end podium three years in a row. Back in sixth, Philip Schiap far off the pace as he tries to first catch up with Ahmed Al Hamali. Bad luck for Sammy Celio. Last year's race and pole winner is out of the race this time, just a quarter of the way through, and that will cost him his world standings lead. Further back, Moritz Stromoy tenaciously continues to give chase to Bartek Marsalek, trying to regain her position, pushing all out, cutting those turns real tight. Too tight! She takes out two turn buoys. Yellow flag. She'll be fine and disqualified for that. She just pushed a little too hard. The Norwegian former Grand Prix winner is not happy. The yellow flag is good news for the guys chasing Stark as the bunch up means they now get a chance to get the jump on the Swede. Green flag, Daniel Kamsi puts pressure on Stark, but Stark holds on. Sean Torrente is slipping back at the restart, losing third spot, while Philip Schiap is fighting Jonas Anderson, trying to regain sixth position. Big drama as Corella goes head to head with Ahmed Al Hamali in a battle for third, but Al Hamali just maintains his edge. <laughs> Oh. 
behind them is a drag race between Shep and Anderson. Shep moves past the Swede. Further back, Torrente's woes continue as he slows and drops through the field. Rashid Al Kamzi passing him by. Daniel Kamzi in his 17th season is a seven-time Grand Prix winner and he continues to give chase to Stark. Behind him, Ahmed Al Hamali moves up from fifth to third after the restart. Corella in fourth, Schiap up in fifth, Torrente nowhere to be seen. Corella is right on Al Hamali's tail. Can the victory driver hold on? This is turning out to be a gargantuan fight with 21 laps down. Al Hamali thought he'd won pole position here last year before he was deemed to have gone out of the circuit, handing pole to Celio. So he wants to prove his medal out there, and he's doing a good job holding off Corella. She up in fifth, not taking any risks, knowing that he needs to first secure some points to get his campaign back on track this year. And it's heartbreak for Torrente. His engine gives up on him. A second no points finish in three races does not look good for his 2017 chances. He storms back to his tent. Uh, engine failure, number six cylinder uh, is what it is. Motor was running good, boat was running good. And wasn't my day, I guess. Bartek Marshalek is in seventh position. The Blaze Performance driver given chase by F4 graduate Rashid Al Kamzi in his first full year on the F1 H2O Tour. In the running for the points here in eighth position for Team Abu Dhabi. F1 Atlantic's Duarte Benevente, the current world number four, is also out of the race, retiring 20 laps from the end. Benevente's teammate Grant Trask of Australia is the last one flying the F1 Atlantic flag, going strong in 12, proving he's very comfortable racing at this level. Despite the new boat, Francesco Cantando fails to complete the race, still getting adjusted to his new machine and its unique design. The laps are winding down and the drivers are tiring, making mistakes, losing concentration, and there are plenty of people trying to take advantage of that, hanging in there to pounce on any error and take any chance they can get. Corella is still giving chase to Al Hamili with utmost determination, but Al Hamili is not losing focus out there. He's got his head down and racing like a champ. Stark is tantalizingly close now to his first ever Grand Prix win. He just has to hold on a few more laps. He's had podiums before, but this would be his first ever Grand Prix win. Daniel Kamzi is giving chase with all he's got. It's been years since he won a Grand Prix, but today may just be out of his reach. In the final lap, Eric Stark is on his way into that final straight to claim his first ever Grand Prix win. Eric Stark crosses the finish line alongside teammate Jonas Anderson, who sees him through and congratulations, even though he's one lap behind. What a victory for Eric Stark. What a victory for Team Sweden. A small team compared to some of those giants they're competing against. Eric Stark is the Harbin Grand Prix champion for 2017. A well-deserved victory lap. Alkamzi runner-up. Al Hamili on the podium in third. Corella fourth. Shep hangs in there in fifth. Anderson adds five points for Team Sweden with sixth place. Great result for Marshallek in seventh. Roms, De Guin, and Morin all add points to their tallies. I never let off. All the race for 45 minutes. I was like, cannot breathe. I'm ready to everything. <laughs> Good thing I finished there. I'm very happy. I'm sorry for my teammate, Sean. This is what you want. I make a good start. I think I'm third, but uh, Ahmed uh, arrived uh, at my front and uh, oh, it's very, very close. And after I'm six or seven and uh, I fight, but it's very hard race. In the team standings, big points for Team Abu Dhabi with that second and fourth place finish. Team Sweden up in second, 19 points behind Team Abu Dhabi, with victory team sharing third with Mad Croc Baba. I have a 
great race today. I start a uh, very strong start and I get uh, almost to catch the first, but I keep space for uh, Eric, keep safe race. And then uh, we're fighting uh, in the course, 20 lap fighting. Almost sometimes I catch him, but uh, I know I don't need to make any crash and finish the race. It's so amazing, like when I crossed the finish line, I was actually really crying in the boat. And last time I did that was when I was winning the World Championship in Formula 2. And so actually this is one of my biggest things in my life. So now I'm so, I'm so happy. That win moves Eric Stark up into third place on 27 points, tied with Philip Schiap. The new world standings leader is Alex Carella, who puts eight points between him and second place Sammy Celio. Torrente drops down to ninth. Stark would of course be treated to an F1 H2O tradition where first time Grand Prix winners get a little post-race bath. That concludes another incredible Grand Prix of Harbin. The F1 H2O Tour stays in China as Liu Zhao hosts round four of the 2017 season. Wow, 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 wow.